Dear ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are well from whatever you're watching this channel. And I know you're still not feeling well because of the verdict that the courts gave. But please just take heart and move on. I'm also in the same scenario, but I've managed to move on. It is a sad reality, but Kenya has to move on. So ladies and gentlemen, I have something that I'd like to share with you. And uh, still on the, on the Raila Molo Dinga's case or rather Amolo, Raila Amolo Dinga's failure, the reason why Raila Amolo Dinga had to fail. So I think it's good if we do some critical analysis as to what could have transpired and what could have led to that kind of defeat. I mean, in quotes, I put in quotes because the defeat is still questionable, but since the Supreme Court had made a determination, there is nothing that can be done. So but before you delve into that, please, if you're first time viewer, take a moment and subscribe to our channel. You can give us a thumbs up, you can hit the notification bell as usual, so that every time I post a video, you'll always become the first person to get notified. If, if I go straight into the, 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 the three cause to four reasons that failed Raila Molodinga in Uhuru's government, one of the things that I think could have failed Raila Molodinga dismally is the fact that he did a handshake with Huru Miguel Kenyatta. Remember in 2017, Raila had an upper hand because according to what the judges' verdict was is that the, 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 the votes, the, the election was rigged. So perhaps it could have been that Raila Molodinga could have won, but it was unfairly awarded to Huru Miguel Kenyatta. So that handshake is the biggest downfall to Raila Molodinga's political career. I attribute this downfall to that major handshake you know, when the Jubilee government came into power in 2013, amidst, amidst a lot of those promises that they made that they couldn't fulfill, talking about those uh, studies, talking about so many things, even there was a free internet back then, the laptops and the everything. So, because they could not deliver these things within the five, five, five years, and because within the five years there are a lot of corruptions which are which were exposed but by my by, by even the president himself you remember when the president toured uk he said that the, he believes that the corruption is starting from his office so he was specifically referring to the deputy president's office because the presidency is comprised of the president the deputy president so he's, he indicated that corruption is at his doorstep so when Raila Morodinga decided to do a handshake with the uh, uhuru Mugia kenyatta that is where all hell broke loose because Ruto find a way of distancing himself and causing a rebellion on this same government that he's serving. I think that played well for him, and it's a game plan that if you look at it, look if you can look at it carefully, they realize that Ruto was very smart back then because Raila Molodinga decided to put himself in the mix of Jubilee's failures, and under the disguise that. He was going to get the full support of the system, the government, so that in 2022 he could ascend to the, to the to, he could become the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. I think that William Samoy Ruto did not want. So perhaps that is why William Samoy Ruto, being smarter the way he is, you all agree that he was smart, decided to create a rebellion within the Jubilee government, and that is available in the public domain, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at the events that followed, the, the rebellion kept growing and the role of the opposition leader became the sole responsibility of William Samoy Ruto. And you know, in that second term, that is where now most problems started to, um, started to emerge and most Kenyans started to feel the difficulty that, was, uh, that, was, that emanated from the failures of the first term of Jubilee government. So Uhuru did not care because... He was not seeking a re-election anymore, so he didn't want to bother about whether William Ruto supported him or did not support him. So perhaps he only needed Raila Molo Dinga because Raila Molo Dinga had had, 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 had shown himself as a fifth president, uh, uh, the, uh, the people's president. So that was a major trouble to Uru Mugai Kenyatta's, you know, government going forward. So after after bringing Raila Molo Dinga on board, Ruru was sure of zero opposition. So what happened is that Ruto became now the de facto opposition leader playing the role of Raila Molo Dinga. I think that earned him a lot of following. 
That is something that we in Azimio must agree to, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fact. That is a fact. That is a major, the first failure. So I have some things that I've listed as major failures. The first thing is the SGR blame. And this is what I think. You know, Raila Molodinga inherited all the blames on loans, yet he never participated in the commissioning of SGR project. You remember in the first term, Raila Molodinga, Mdavadi, Wetangula, Musesko, they were under the code, you know, umbrella. They fought this SGR project, even talked about the, 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 the loans having been, uh, you know, the way they used to, the government used to get loans, even Mudavadi criticized it. I don't know why, why Mudavadi forgot that, but he criticized Uhuru and Ruto's government over these loans. So this blame became a burden, these loans became a burden to the Kenyan, Kenyan people, and Ruto decided to take advantage of that blame. And you saw when he was forming his Kenya Kwanza, uh, Kenya Kwanza team, he tasked Mdavadi to be the one to talk about this uh, state acquisition, state capture. That's what we call it. He talked about it in Mombasa. He even talked about reversing everything that SGR has accomplished. A thing that we know it cannot be done. But that, that was a political tool to want to gain the confidence of the coastal people. And it played in their favor. That's the truth. Because if you look at the numbers that Ruto got in, in, in cost, then it was not far from what Raila Morodinga got. So that means the, 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 the narrative about the state capture, the narrative about the SGR played well in these political campaigns. So I have a second point that I think could have caused Raila Morodinga's could have been the major threat in Raila Morodinga's political career. The BBI power play. A clause, there was a clause within BBI that sought to introduce a body or an organ that would check the judiciary. A thing that the Supreme Court was not in agreement with and, and Raila kept pursuing BBI regardless. BBI failed because of that clause that created a body like ombudsman that was going to do a checks and balance on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is an independent body and the judiciary did not want that kind of clause to be introduced in that BBI. That is the major reason why the bench decided to shoot down this bill completely and that was the hand of BBI. And if Ruto is becoming the fifth president, then that means the BBI project was a major failure. And that is one of the reasons that I believe worked towards the failure of Raila Amor Odinga's political career. Because during the campaigns of BBI, Ruto was, was fighting this BBI. And the BBI project was meant to, to you know, bring all those governors into one unit. But then the moment BBI failed, you saw this integration of the BBI pro team. So the likes of Anwar Iguru walk away. So many other governors walked away and even other politicians, they walked away. That's the time when Mudavadi also decided to decamp from the, the Raila team because he had banked on the fact that if BBI came into place, he would get a seat. So that failure is the major reason why Raila Amolo Odinga's political journey has ended the way it has ended right now, ladies and gentlemen. So on to my third point, I still believe the escalation of food, food prices that we all know that emanated from the fact that there was the Ukraine and Russia war. And you know Ukraine has been supplying us with a lot of things. I think even fertilizer comes from that area. You know, rice and you know wheat and all those come from that place. Maize and the like. But the moment this invasion by the Russian started, and this affected global prices, Kenya was also affected. The prices escalated. So, Ruto took that advantage and decided to blame the Jubilee government directly to not having controlled the prices of the common commodities. And this is what has made Raila Morodinga suffer again. Because people were suffering, prices were escalating, Raila Morodinga was not in a position to now defend the people because he had been assured of a presidency. 
he had been assured of a deep state support. So there was no way his hands were tied. There was no way he could fight this government. So Ruto took advantage to become the de facto opposition leader and fight this government. So perhaps that's the reason why you see those numbers played in favor of William Samoy Ruto. And I think that's the major reason why the Supreme Court made such a unanimous decision. They did not look at the evidence. They only looked at the previous happenings and said, no, let us put a stop to this Uhuru Raila uh, Maja. So on to my fourth point, ladies and gentlemen. So the crackdown on pro-Ruto supporters, especially in Mount Kenya, that was one of the major factors that was one of the major factors that made Raila Amolo Odinga suffer. So, this point, this is what I think. The crackdown created or enabled Ruto to successfully create an illusion of deep state. An idea that in the minds of the people, and personally I think, this caused a rebellion within Mount Kenya region. Because, you know, the formation of Jubilee government was majorly between Rift Valley region and the Mount Kenya region. So when that rebellion came into play, the Rift Valley region had, that was initially the URP had to go on one side. They, all of them supported Ruto regardless. But then the Uhuru Miguel Kenyatta had plans that maybe if that rebellion came into place, then his Mount Kenya lieutenant would stick with him. But that was not the case because the lieutenants in Mount Kenya decided to stick to William Samoy Ruto. So that is where all hell started breaking loose for Uhuru Miguel. So the calculations that he had did not work in the way he wanted them. You remember the constant attacks by Moses Kuria and Kimani Gunjiri and, and, and Gunjiri, Susan Kihika, and all those other uh, Mount Kenya diehards. Those were the reasons that now gave or made Uhuru Miguel Kenyatta become upset. So that's why the, the DCI, that's what I, can, I mean, that's what I wrote you to say, the DCI was being used to now fight these people. That also that the KRA were also being used to fight these people. So that was one of the biggest downfall in this project. The project, I call it the project because Uhuru Miguel Kenyatta had wanted Raila Molo Dinga to succeed. So Ruto successfully referred to Raila Molo Dinga as a project. And this is what most Kenyans did not want. Most Kenyans wanted Raila Molo Dinga to be independent, not to be under the umbrella of another person, a person whom, according to them, they think failed the country. That is what they think, according to what has been peddled on the campaigns. Ladies, and gentlemen, I would like to wind up there, but I leave the ball to you. You can choose to follow on what the government is doing. You can choose not to. I prefer that you keep track of what the government is doing so that we don't go back into the, into the days of Moise era. We want our country to move on and make those strides that we'll be making the political strides that have been assuring us of a better future so i'd like to urge you while i'm winding up the first time viewers please if you're first time viewer or if you're a regular viewer who've not subscribed to our channel please just hit the sub hit the subscriber button hit the notification bell and you can give us a thumbs up so until we meet again i'd like to urge you to stay safe and stay blessed